we said we'd be back and here we are. Yeah, different time though, because last night we were going to do it and then we just ended up absolutely shattered by a <laughs> You get to be pensioners now. Gosh, nice. all old and slow. <laughs> so it's been a while and we will do these, but we're going to do them less frequently and when we really feel pushed to. And as we realised today, we probably should have done this when we had the original conversation because it was like to the mood and back with rocket, yeah. conversation that was really, really relevant. So we'll do our best to rehash because it was it was really interesting the last couple of weeks what we've been noticing with humans and with interactions and perspectives and just the entrapment that humans are living by or allowing or existing with yes. animals. It's yeah. an interesting spot because we seem to be taught from the day we're born mm. to push out, to try more, to do more and to fit in. Well, the bad news is, it's actually not bad news, it's good news. We're not designed to fit in. We're not designed for this economic slavery mm. that uh, we're taught that we should be. Mm. We, we sort of had this conversation about how many hours people work, and I mean, most people go, oh yeah, that we're working 40 hours. So many people do far, far more than that. Mm. And we're over-pushing. We're killing ourselves. For what? For what? The funny thing is, how many of you have sick days? Why is it, if we're meant to be working as much as we are, why do we get allocated sick days? Why do we get allocated holidays? Why do we get time off? Why do we have all these things? Like, why is that actually a thing? Because they realise they're killing humans and they need time off. And it's funny because it's been, it's been drilled into us from primary school and high school. Get older, learn the things, get a qualification, work in a career, earn money, make this, do that, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. And the thing they, they, they do roughly touch on PE and they do roughly touch on home economics and whatnot, but they don't touch about relating. They don't touch about emotions and intimacy. They don't talk about balance and mindset in school as much as they should. But what they do talk about is the, the belief systems that we've been built upon about slave, uh, enslavement and entrapment and the structures. They glorify that. They glorify it. They make it this thing where you're not a considerable uh, citizen of the uh, community unless you're doing this slavery, unless you're folding to the dictation that has been set upon us. And so we've been having these really cool conversations and we saw that thing pop up in um, Instagram the other day of this chicken, I don't know who it was, but it was just perfect to start off this conversation. Because she was even saying like, she's an American, somewhere over in America, and she's like, what is the go where we all are forced or told that we have to work and then suddenly, and, like, and then we need holidays and our body gets to a certain point and it breaks down, our mind gets to a certain point and it loses its equilibrium. <laughs> yeah, we, what, what's happened is we've been told, and why do you think, and this is, it's not why do you think, it's ask yourself the question. Ask yourself, think about it. A little bit it. deeper. Why we work 40 hours a week? Why we get the week? Why you only have five days and not seven? Or what, what the general ratio of, of the world actually is? There's a reason for it. Mm. It's because it's the end of breaking point. That's as much as you can actually get out of people before they completely fatigue, mm. mentally, physically, and in every way. The thing is, is that everything that's been done, it's been taught to us from school, and we've just accepted it. Yeah, as, as the way to go. Of and course, master. Yes, master. Yes, school. Yes, prime minister. Yes, yes, legislation. Yes, law. We will do simply, your thing. Simply of buying in to the thought and the fact that we're economic slaves. Mm. So slavery wasn't very, didn't work well. Mm. The slaves didn't want to work, they didn't want to push too hard. Social conditioning, thank you Daniel. Yeah, they didn't want to push too hard, they just wanted to do the bare minimum and they weren't even good at that. They rebelled, they fought, they did all of these things. But with economic slavery, people are left wanting more. They've, they've been bred into this consumerism and sold to and the employer pays just enough to keep you wanting more. Mm. So all of us get lost at some point in our life in this consumerism where we want more, we need more, we strive and you push more than 50 hours a week burning out your body harder than the slaves work we're working harder than the slaves work yeah to try and have more because you've got a taste and the marketing out there has been so good at it and don't just think this started from big companies this started from government this started from the the rothschilds and the rockefellers and the people that have been at the head and the elite 
for millions or well, not for long, centuries. Like, for, for a centuries. long time, let's not say millions. Yeah. <laughs> and the worst part is, is so many have been then bred and conditioned to think the only way I can possibly make do, the only way I can beat this is become in management or the higher up roles, which then means you're enslaved and entrapped into harder working roles, harder working hours for maybe a little bit more money, maybe a few more benefits and perks, for what? But the thing is, is we're, we're, we're conditioned to want and need that because we're told that quality of life is having all the things. But it's not true. And I think what we've been doing the last six months is proving that that's not true. You can have as much as you want and as much as you need, but you are all fucking smart humans if you step outside the matrix. You're all fucking incredible people who have so much potential if you step away from the mind-numbing consumerism. Yeah. If you step away from that and think differently and question things more, it's amazing how much enlightenment comes. And we've been talking about the synchronicity of things. Like, literally, we've been like, yeah, this is going really well, but it could potentially slow down. It could go to this or that. I wonder if we should start diversifying into another thing, which we are doing. But then suddenly, two days later, bang, another opportunity is rocked up that's going to diversify things tenfold. Then we're talking about wanting another car. So we got one car, but the one we really, 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 really want, two days later, it's in two day lots. Two days later, popped up. It's all happening in this beautiful synchronicity because we're asking questions. We're getting out there and questioning the law, questioning the legislation, questioning the dictatorship and the society's regime that they live by. It's really funny. An ex of mine used to say, I love the holidays, but it sucks because it takes me at least three days to wind down and let go and finally relax, right? This is how bad their adrenal glands, how bad their system was running because it took them at least three days to figure out some kind of equilibrium of balance and calm and a state of rejuvenation. To then get to the end of the holiday and then you gotta go back again. And then what happens, you end up with three days to two weeks of depression because you're then going back into this unbalanced, unforgiving, torturous, dictatorship that eats away your soul and you all know it and yet you all take it for gospel you all take it for this thing that is the way we do things but what if it's not right there's there's an interesting point we we hear this a lot and i hear it a lot and people constantly say and i go just don't do it if you don't want to do it don't do it and so many people say oh but i have to that is absolutely bullshit you're making the choice consistently the choices you make today define your tomorrows. Don't tell me that you have no option but to go to work or you have to stay in this dead end job. You are choosing to be there. Mm. So don't, don't lie to yourself. You don't have to have that job. Get a better one. Quit it. Do something else. Buy less. What are you scared of? And, and what you find, have a look around because people go, I need to make more money so that I don't have to work as much. What happens when people make more money? They bring their lifestyle up to meet it. We were talking about miners. Like I used to work in mining, Clint's worked in mining, and we used to live up in these areas where everyone was miners. And what happens? They all get more money, so they all spend more money, but they don't spend it in the way that's actually smart. They spend it in ways that they're getting trapped within the system, yet again, by having loans, by having credit cards, by having cars, by having all the fancy things, and what happens suddenly they get pulled off, suddenly work gets stopped, and then you see a shite load of really great cars and really great things being sold for nothing because they can't pay for it. This over expectation of standard of living. If we lost everything tomorrow and we had to go back to our last house or we had to go back to something smaller than this and we had to go back to nothing and walk on the beach every day, we'd be okay. The, the thing is, we talked about this, so many people get upset about everything and they don't look inside and ask the question why and the reason for that so let's say you've got a job if you lost your job tomorrow would it greatly affect your mental health because it's not about you losing the job it's about your own mental state here if you lost something super important to you doesn't matter what it is would you be horrified if your tv broke how would that make you feel mm. And I ask that question because it's not how that makes you feel. It's how you choose to feel about the situation. And what you've used to create your identity, right? So many of you, your identity is, I am a banker. I am a bartender. I am a teacher. I am bleh. 
They're all personas and coping mechanisms and addictions to create relevance for your being, your relevance yep. as to why you're here. But is it really? How many people get to 60, 70 and go, shit, all those years, and where am I? All those years and I have nothing to show for it. Or all those years and now I have to spend all that money and all this time trying to repair my health yeah. because I overdid it. Like this is the balance that we talk about all the time. And this is what I do in epigenetic work, right? Is the fact that so many of you are killing yourselves to then go and spend money to fix it, to then go and spend money to kill yourself again. Why? It's insanity. The insanity is the slavery and the tra entrapment of which we choose to allow the dictatorship to enforce upon us. We choose this. The biggest limitation we all have is what our minds let us do. Mm. Because what ends up happening is when you're comfortable, it's easy to stay in that com comfort zone. Are you in a shitty relationship? Mm. How many people have been in a shitty relationship but not wanted to leave because it's more comfortable to stay in it than to leave? It's like the dog laying on the nail. It is more comfortable to stay laying on the nail than to actually get up and get moving. Mm. So the point is, is nothing good ever came from a comfort zone. Mm. If you're happy with your mediocre life, if you're happy with sitting in, um, in, in this average position, great. But don't complain about it and don't say that, look, I'm here because I have no other option. Don't use that bullshit excuse. It's a cop out. All you're doing is wasting your time, wasting their time, and wasting life. Like, and you not get being honest one. with yourself. Yeah. You're not being honest with yourself. You get it's one opportunity, you get one life to really create something for yourself, to really live, to really experience. If you had no money, the one thing I've learned in my life is I've earned a lot of money in a lot of different ways, and I've lost a lot of money. My last investment that went bad, I lost $21,000 overnight. That's yep. a massive loss to a lot of people. And what did I learn? I can make money again. I can survive and I can get really creative if I have to. And so many of you have forgotten the fact that you are very resourceful, you have many options, and you're all just lazy. I lost a quarter of a million dollars in Papua New Guinea. Yeah. Ch chasing gold over there. And that was a really, really tough time because at the same time, my other business basically stopped making money. Mm. We were selling gear, selling everything to try and recover the loss. We were spending a lot of money, we were moving through it. But didn't really change my mental state. Reason being is it's only damn money. We focus so much on the things that don't matter. Mm. We really, really focus so much on the things that don't matter. Walking on the beach, being present, doing yoga, using your body, breathing deeply, spending time with loved ones. I, I remember someone said years ago, and I just think of the way the world works. Wouldn't it be amazing if trees produced Wi-Fi signal? Because then... <laughs> We'd be planting them everywhere and it'd be really, really cheap. Too bad they only, they only produce the oxygen we need to live. Yeah, funny how so we create relevant. We, we value create. this value. absolute bullshit. We mm. value all of this stuff that has no intrinsic value. It has no massive help to your actual life because you can live without the internet, believe it or not. You can live without all of these things and actually a much better life that doesn't own you. Yeah. And I just find that so many people, this is coming back to where we were, we all keep saying, I don't, well, I don't say it, but a lot of people say, I don't have a choice. And I said it with um, all the COVID bullshit and it come out when I said, yeah, when these, the police that are doing some of this and enforcing it are no better than the Nazis. Mm. And uh, someone said, oh, yeah, but they don't have a choice. And I said, that is an absolute cop-out. No one says you have to do exactly the right thing, first of all, and you're choosing to have this job. There is thousands of jobs out there. You don't have to have the same one. Yes, sometimes... You might go into something that's a means to an end to get you to a better spot. We've all had to do that at some place. Again, we don't have to. Don't have to. We do it to. because we choose to. Because Consistent. we've created some kind of relevance that has created an addiction or a requirement for us to live out this standard of living, which is actually bulderdash. You actually can live in many different ways. You can accept many different paradigms and realities. The one you've chosen is the one you're addicted to the most. And I would ask you all to have a look and reflect on that. What are you addicted to? What are you making relevant that actually isn't? Where are your values? Consistently make better decisions. Better choices and ask better questions. And the reason I say that, your choices today define tomorrow's. Mm -hmm. They absolutely impact the way not only you think, the way you do, the way you feel, and the effects that come of it today. If you're getting around being an asshole your whole life, do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? You're going to be treated like an asshole. Mm -hmm. It's going to have a flow-on effect. Everything is so connected. 
in every single way. If you're feeding your body with absolute shit and not doing any exercise, guess what? Tomorrow you're gonna feel like absolute shit and probably be overweight. And be depressed. All of those things are gonna come up. We're smarter than this. Mm. We're better than this. We can actually understand and go, hmm, this is a better way to do that. Have a look around. If you're not happy with any aspect of your life, ask yourself why. And the reason that I come back to this is every, and there's a big talk about whether there is such thing as free will. The reason sometimes it's questioned is if you had the choice to be happy or sad, would you be happy or sad? There is not a damn person that's going to say, I would choose to be sad all the time. Unless they have an addiction and a problem. Yeah, but okay. <laughs> Again, the, the point there is if you choose, and the thing is, happiness, sadness, whatever else, is your choice. Mm. It is 100% your choice. It's a state of mind. So if you want to be happy all the time, make better choices. If you want to be sad all the time, choose to do that. That's fine. No one really cares whether you do or you don't. But the point is, don't blame someone else. Don't blame your parents. Don't blame your job. Don't blame your school. <laughs> don't blame your upbringing. Don't blame your partner. Make better decisions. Own your life. Own your yeah. choices. Own your addictions. And just ask yourself, what are you scared of? Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? We've both pretty well been homeless before. We've both had nothing before. We've both lost everything before. When you get to that point, you really start to realize that there is so much abundance out there. There is so much opportunity out there. There is so much for us to live better lives if we choose it and if we're open and aware of it. Yeah, 100%. I find there's some really interesting points and people actually think we're hard done by and we're not. It's actually, no. we live in the 21st century we have running water, we have electricity. I lived on a mine site for five years where there was no power. For the first two years, I had no power, I had no fridge. I had, actually, I had power, but it was a 12 volt battery running to stop lamps out of cars. When, the, when that battery got flat at night time, which is normally about eight o'clock, may as well go to bed. There was nothing else unless you were sitting around the fire, ran out of fuel, fuel food, matches, everything. There's no blaming anyone for all of those things. That was my choice to be there. And that seemed like the best option I had at the time. Still my choice. I could have gone and got a job and done other things, which I did do at one stage in that, in that time. But everything we do, we try to make the best decisions we have at the time. But remember that sometimes the people you surround yourself with are what impact your decisions. Surround yourself with six millionaires, you'll be the seventh. Surround yourself with six bums, you're going to be the seventh. Six drug addicts, you'll be the seventh. Yep. If you surround yourself by people that are successful, and I ask you to question what success means to you because all of a sudden you're in, in a room full of the wrong people and, and, and the wrong money. Yeah, Quite successful easy. can just be show ponies as well. And, and, and they're obnoxious. And I ask you to question that because I've been there. I've had it. I've done it. I've been extremely wealthy before. And there's no value in it. There's actually no value. In, and at some of those points where I had more money than I knew what to do with it, I was very happy to blow my brains out. I was very much there. Mm -hmm. And I and I didn't stop and question why. I didn't I just kept doing because as an outsider looking in, you would have looked at my life and most people would go, Wow, you could do anything you want, you've got businesses, you've got brand new cars, you've got everything the world would define as success, but I felt like a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. So there's some really interesting things like that. Another friend of mine from an outsider looking in, I mean he had a brand new Land Cruiser, he had a brand new Mercedes, he was had a beautiful house in the canal and mermaid waters there, and it was absolutely loaded. Everyone was looking at the way he lived his life. Yeah, well, he hung himself. Mm -hmm. That was, no one really knew from an outside of looking in, this guy was successful. Mm. But what's going on in here, the way you choose to think and the way you choose to feel, and quite often, having more makes you feel less. Yeah. And so, you end up having to numb yourself because you're accountable for so much more. Mm. And those num numbing mechanisms usually become quite poisonous and carcinogenic. Yeah. Um, recently I was at an event and they were talking all about success and they were talking about how you know you've got to strive for more and your money value is where you get the things and that's how you become successful and it really made it quite aware to me that still these people these connected conscious people put a dollar value on their success and their happiness and most of them were stressed a lot of their days because they had so much they yes they would say the more money you have the, the bigger problems you get why? Why? You can still have the same impact. You can still have the same effect without pushing so damn hard and hurting yourself. And all of these people would still make jokes about the fact that they were fat, overweight, unhealthy, unbalanced. For what? 
You're dictating success. You're dictating a better life. But is it really? Is that really a better life? Start connecting and just have a bit of a look around what, what makes the difference to you. Mm. Essentially, it's going to come back to two things, which we've talked about a thousand times. A million times. Presence and yeah. balance. So there's a balance there because I always say to live in this moment, but pay your bills just in case you live tomorrow as well. And with, when it comes to money, yes, it is in most ways necessary to live in this world. And somehow it's easier to cry in a Ferrari than it is on a push bike. <laughs> somehow. The thing is, is if you look around, and you, if you're working 40 hours a week and you're exhausted, buy less, spend less and work 30 hours. You can choose to do this. Get a different job. You can look and go, you know what? If I take a pay cut, and work a different job and I don't buy the new flat screen that's coming out or the new iPhone. How many people do you know that look around and as soon as the next thing comes out, oh. they're buying it? Look, I have a, for me, I actually really enjoy and love my life and I have a $200 crappy phone that I bought two years ago. Mm. Who gives a shit? That doesn't make me feel any less valuable or any more valuable. I'm not defining my life by inanimate objects. Same as being a fitness professional, I remember so many people looking down on me because I had the same fitness clothing from nine years ago. Like, and some of them may be Lorna Jane, but I'd gotten them as gifts, right? So don't define yourself by brand names and labels and, and titles. None of it's you. Your soul, your being, your presence, how you show up when you walk into a room. The ripple effect you have and the energy you have to give other people because you fill your own cup so beautifully. That's your impact on the world. That's your success. Your success is how you show up as a person, as a being, as a soul. Sure, you can contribute with a million dollar company, but for how long and at what cost? The other point, just to have a little bit of a think on before we probably sign off is, mm. you are not who you think you are. Mm. You are not who I think you are. You are who you think I think you are. Mm. So the projection that you're thinking that other people think about you is actually who you start becoming. Mm -hmm. So if you think everyone thinks you're a loser, it's going mm -hmm. to be that way. So there's a whole lot here that you really need to take in, understand, put a better vibe out there. Mm -hmm. Start thinking more of yourself because you're amazing. You are amazing. You're all amazing. That's why we show up and we do this because we love, we love humans. We love your human potential. We love everything that you're about. And I think we're just trying to do things a different way and have better, bigger conversations because this is where it starts, is bigger, better conversations. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Amazing. All right. Love you guys. See you guys on the flip side. I don't know something